Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. Myself, Dr. Anil Kumar Diman, working as information scientist, Gurukul Kangadi University, Haridwar. Today, we will discuss planning and internal organization of building under special and resources libraries. This module is developed primarily for special libraries. So, first of all, we should know what a special library is. As a special library is a term used for the library that is neither an academic, school, public, or national library. Rather, special libraries are those libraries which are attached to a specific type of institution and cater the needs of readers of that particular organization to which they are attached. Johnson has a stress over the service part of a special library. He has specifically ranked its service as more important than the subject value. While Ridley has considered subject as the most important aspect in a special library, he says a special library is a collection of information covering a specific field which may be administered by special staff and for services of limited clientele. While according to White, clientele and materials are the most important aspect of a special library. He says a special library is with a specialized clientele or a specialized material or with a combination of both. Therefore, clientele, subject, services are three important aspects in special libraries. Hence, based on these three definitions, a special library may be defined as the libraries which contain a special material on a special subject for the special clientele. Thus, business and trade and industry libraries, children libraries, government libraries, hospital libraries, mobile libraries, newspaper libraries, prison libraries, Research and Development Libraries, Socio-Economic Development Research Institute Library, and Visually Handicapped or Mentally Retarded Libraries may be considered as the special libraries. So students, have a look on the major objectives of the module. The main objectives of the module are to study elements for the building plan, librarians brief for library building, constitution and role of library building committee, and also the role of head of the institute in library building. Further, the planning of special library building will be discussed. Besides, principle for library building construction like functional design, open access, flexibility, provision of areas, modular design, and future growth will be discussed. Besides, the module will emphasize over the changing pattern of planning of library building in digital environment. And lastly, the interior decoration of library building will be discussed. Now come to the Building aspect of a special libraries. Firstly, I will look on the elements of the building plan. These are constitutes of goals, design standards, and the contents. The goals describe client goals, building purpose, and potential building occupants and the users. Design standards reflect architect and client agreement on such issues as flexibility of use, building maintenance, and institutional image and the relation to building aesthetics and flexibility of use. The content outline the building contents and collection by collection type, quantity, and expected level of growth. Further, building spaces. It describes rooms and the relative size in a square feet or meter. Agencies. This describes relationship of rooms based on their functional needs. Environment. The environment defines Temperature, humidity, lighting, and working area requirements. Patterns of use. It describes the client use of spaces and the type of activities that are carried out in the specific areas. Furnishing. Furnishing lists the equipment and furnishing with an indication of whether equipment will be provided by or purchased by the client or be a part of the building contract. Now, have a look on the library's brief for library building. These activities may include activities of library function and the objectives of library, clientele, regular users and potential users, automation, computer system, networking. Further, the size of the library, which may include location, site, and access. Space management, stacks for books, printed material, reading room, staff room, seminar and meeting hall, and stacks for non-book material comes under this. 
11 can also brief on the library building, on the following points, its front elevation, interior design, entrance and gangways, exit and control, air conditioning and lightning, equipment and furniture, future extension, location of different section in library, and library and other staff offices. Library building committee. After the librarian's brief, the role of building committee come into the picture. A library committee may consist of an architect, librarian, library consultant, interior decorator, other the institute, and members from administrative staff, board members, and other officers of the institutes. Architect. An architect is the leader of designing team of any building. He usually assess the needs and analyze the problems like arise in different fields of service. So he is expected to be competent one to design a functional and attractive library building within the assigned budget. He is who creates the design of the building as specified by the librarian, but there should be a coordination in between the librarian and architect. In this regard, Thompson say, to leave an architect without an adequate brief is not to liberate his genius, but to limit his potential. An architect is a specialist in designing to meet client's requirements, not in guessing what these requirements are or should be. Librarian. If we talk about the librarian's role, he has the prime role in planning of the library building. Librarian's planning begins with the assessment of the library's total contribution to the organization, securing a viable and sizable financial grant, trying up priorities and relationship with the institute, culture, and services, looking to the retail organization of the library resources, particularly the reader service. He usually develops a working relation with the architect. He is the person who also closely works with the building committee and briefs the library plan and actual needs of the library to the architect. Librarian makes sure that each room is planned well with the pre-designed layout. Library consultant. A library consultant is the person who assists the librarian in planning. He has to determine functional relationship between various parts of the structure with the assistance of librarian. He usually brings the whole work with a wide experience of library planning and so also evaluates the plan and proposals. Interior decorator. An interior decorator is the person who designs the interior portion of a library building in such a way that it could attract the users as well as give calm to them while they use the library for long hours. Head of the institute. Head of the institute is the person who approves all the decisions made by the architect, librarian, and the library consultant. However, the head of the institute can delegate the authority and responsibility to the building committee or can nominate a responsible person for the same purposes. Other members Other members of the building committee work towards a common goal of developing a good library building in economy way with the stipulated budget. So now we shall look into the planning of a special library building. A planning for library building includes pre-planning activities, physical facilities and environment, clientele, location of site, budget, and finalization. As far as pre-planning activities are concerned, they include gathering the information, including internal information through visiting other libraries, discussing with other colleagues and experts, attending seminars, exhibitions, conferences, and reading the relevant literature on library building. Based on them, a proposal is made by the librarian who incorporates general features like objective, type, status, and location of the library to be established. Facilities to be provided and the statistic about existing library along with the resources required for implementation. Physical facilities and environment. The marketing of services, quality of services, and the customers, which are the users, are kept in view while go for physical facilities and the environment consideration. The physical environments need to be improved because customers are ultimate judge of the services to be provided by the library in long run. This also helps to reinforce the proposed position and image of the organization through physical environment. Clientele. They include the understanding of clientele in terms of characteristics, styles, idiosyncrasies, needs, opinion, priorities, preferences, relations, attitudes and the behavior. Earlier studies 
may provide clear and direct input for creating appropriate physical facilities and the environment. Therefore, nature of the users, pattern of uses, age and status differences must be given due consideration along with the psychological and behavioral patterns of the clientes while go for planning a library building. Location or site. The proper location of a library will substantially influence the extent to which its users will be made use of by the staff of the organization. A library should be established in serene surroundings, insulated from din and dust. Further, the library should be accessible from outside and from the entrance to different parts of the building by means of a simple and easy to understand plan requiring only a few direction of guidelines. Indian National Design of Library Buildings has given some recommendations relating to its primary elements. These documents may be consulted for full details on library building and sites. Budget Budget plays an important role in transforming any thought into reality. It is essential to know how much of the money is with the, the organization for which the library is going to be established and what services will be provided to their users. Generally, a long-term budget is prepared for the construction of library building. It is essential to ascertain that whether the budget is sufficient or not for the purpose. If not, what types of the services we may suspend for the time being and accordingly the building may be constructed in planned phases. Finalization The plan is finalized after considering all the factors we have discussed. If all the members of the library committee are satisfied, then the finance is arranged and construction of the library may be started after calling the tenders from the builders or from already approved contractor of the organization. Now, coming to the principle for library building construction. A special library tend to have small physical facilities which by and large most of the facilities take up a small corner in a corporate non-for-profit or governmental complex and function as information gathering support for certain circumscribed groups. However, the building should be formed on the standard principles. These principles include functional design, open access, flexibility, provision of areas, modular design, and future growth. Now, we will discuss principle for library building construction. As we know, special libraries tend to have small physical facilities, which by and large most of the facilities take up a small corner in a corporate not for profit or governmental complex and function as information gathering support for certain circumscribed groups. However, the building should be formed on standard principles. These are functional design, open access, flexibility, provision of areas, modular design, and future growth. Functional design. Earlier, the libraries were massive and given monumental looks by constructing them with architectural beauty, impressive external appearance, with big hall and a stairway, massive interior walls, and lofty reading rooms, along with the multi-tire book stacks of low ceiling heights. But the factors like functionality and accessibility were not given so much importance. Slowly, the functionality became the prime importance where many factors were behind this change, and most important was the growing realization of economy to be pursued both in construction of the building as well as the administration of them. The furniture, equipment, lightning, color scheme, and in fact everything contribute to achieve such functionalities. Thus a library should be functional, adaptable, accessible, varied, interactive, conducive, environmentally suitable, safe, and secure, and be efficient suitable for information technology as per the IFLA standards. Open access. A library should have the provision of open access system, but on the other hand it should have only one entrance and one exit to keep a proper control over the users of the library. Further, the height of the book rack should be normal so that the user could easily pick up the books from top most shelf in the library. Flexibility. It means there should be an interchangeability of all major stack areas, services areas, reading areas, and a staff space within the library so that readjustment could be done in case of shifting or addition of services without going for a major modification. There should not be interior load bearing wall, but building should be able to bear the stack load anywhere. Besides, uniform standard of lightning, ventilation, and flooring are to be made out 
with the criteria of interchangeability. Provision of areas. Besides, there should be a good provision for documents, users, administrative and operational staff, service areas and library tools like computers, Xerox machine and OPEX etc. in library building. Modular design. As we have discussed earlier, the library buildings were given the monumental looks up to 1920s, but very little attention was paid towards functionality of the libraries. But now we have a modular system with very few walls and most places the building is supported by pillars which are placed at regular intervals and the load of full building rests on these columns. In case of emergency or forming area for new services, some of the internal walls could be readjusted without major disturbances. All the dimension of library building, furniture and fittings should be in multiple or some multiples of 10 cm module. This would be the ease for tables, chairs, book racks, book trolleys, doors and windows etc. Besides the column spacing of between 22.5 to 3 feet from center to center is suggested. Thus, today library should be modular design. Future growth. A library building is to be planned possible for next few years, keeping in view the rate of a stock development, number of readers and future expansion on the services etc. So a library should be expandable to allow for future growth with minimum of disruption. However, a library building should be designed in such a way so that it can be maintained with minimum of staff and the minimum of finance. Now have a look on the library building in digital environment. We know ICT that is also known as information and communication technologies have affected all spheres around the world and libraries are also not exception to this. Therefore, a library has to be multifunctional, a library has to be comfortable, a library has to exist in harmony, a library should be open and intellectual communication institution. Its building has to be flexible and simple. It should locate the storage on the underground floors. There should be the consistency in design and layout on each floor. There should also be a provision of access to a large number of computer workstations and also the space for self-service equipments. If you talk about the library, it has to be multifunctional. A modern library has to be multifunctional means that it should provide not only the informational or other typical library services, but also the cultural, communicational, and other extra services as well. So adequate premises have to be planned for functional part that will give the library a new image of importance. Library has to be comfortable. It means comfortness of services. One of the most important indicators of modern library activities value. This indicator includes easy access to the library building, rational planning of the building and impressive architecture. There should be a created good working environment in the library and arrangement for individual carers for intensive working and staying users and well illuminated working places with dividing screens separating each place. Comfortableness also include providing the library with soft furnishing, plants, aquariums, soft carpet, large windows, balconies, premises for communication of people with a different interest and provisions with sound and video equipments. Library has to exist in harmony. It means the main emphasis is given on green library that means they should provide cool and peace look and also there should be the provision to clear off all the electronic wastage garbage according to the standard norms. There should be a balance in thermal illumination. Hence the library has to be an organic part of the natural and urban environment. Besides, a library should be open and intellectual communication institution. It means the architectural solution of the modern library has to express the image of the library as an open, democratic and intellectual communication institution. This image can be created by planning buildings of virtual architecture, what can be characterized by dematerialized forms of clear, laconic, simple and visible bulks. But the building of a library has to be not higher than 4 over ground floors. The higher building, the more expensive will its maintenance be, more staff will be needed and more sophisticated technology and security system. Further, a building has to be flexible and simple. This means the planning of the building has to be flexible and simple in the general plan. There have to be possibilities of extension or its transformation. That is why it is advisable to use as much as possible the movable columns, equally located ventilation, heating, and aeration system. The construction of light screen should also be easily movable from one to another to create a large space. Next, 
locate the storage on the underground floor it is advisable to locate the storage species on the underground floors and premises that need daylight on the overground floors the underground storage species can be characterized by the possibility of rational uses of the collection to locate it operatively to organize more credible security of the collection and make it much easier to maintain a proper temperature and humidity design the underground storage species make it possible to design a complete building and better its constructional economic and exploitative indicators next is consistency in the design and layout out on the each floor this is also a common theme this takes into account the need for navigational resistance in negotiating the relatively complicated library physical environment a computer space should be around a certain central atrium and a study space at the extremities of the building with collection of space between these two areas as a noise buffer also there should be a zoning of a study space from noisy open group to study at one end of the floor to single silent open and enclosed study space at the other and group of study rooms on each floor and in the same location on each floor access to large number of computer workstation the access to a very large number of computer workstation will probably be the most significant feature in all the libraries on average one computer can be made spare for every 10 users in a library apart from dedicated catalog workstation access is controlled by user login and the desktop is a standard desktop configuration for the some clients will utilize their own equipments in the library for example the laptops in the library hence provision for wired network access with appropriate furniture is also to be made in the library it can further be enhanced by the provision of wireless networks for personal laptops and mobile phones access a space for self equipment service the concept of the one stop shop for electronic resources tools and assistance will increase in its importance and the clients may demand longer hours of opening and 24 hour access to computing facilities this will need to provide some basic services during the library opening hours linked to the significant take up of self service equipment machines can be installed to make self check and self check out for automatic issue return of the books so a provision for this facility is also to be made self service printing and photocopy facilities are also to be distributed on each floor offer in the same location on each floor again to ease navigation difficulties this trend moves away from the model of provision of a dedicated photocopy space adjacent to the staff assistants now have a look on the interior decoration of library building interior must promote and facilitate the access it must be inviting and allow users to find their way with ease and have easy access to whatever the library provides in house or online equipments furniture and layout must be functional and fit for a modern library in high tech age beside interior must be aesthetically pleasing and comply with the basic principle of interior design interior must also create experiences like memories ideas and emotions that user enjoy and want to come back for now some points on internal organization of the building a library has the following internal departmentation for a smooth running of its services which may constitute of entrance area processing area book shelving area and reading area so continuing on the internal decoration of the library building come to the reading area library is for the users the users are the most important part to which every facilities is to be provided at best hence effort should be made to integrate books and readers to the maximum but that the provision should be made for at least 10 year ahead keeping in view for the addition of the books as well as the increase in the number of readers roughly 60 square feet for each 1000 volumes and 100 square feet for person is kept in the reading area for the additional 40% of the total floor the space must be there for stairways lobbies corridors and ductwork besides as shukumari adds the library must integrate the physical space with the digital world the digital library complements the physical library and substantially expands its possibilities for serving an audience that is physical distant from its location therefore the library should build a comprehensive technological infrastructure expand the technological staff and implement information technology in all aspects of operation 
the library service available in the building like the search aids serving books reserving books consultation exhibits etc should be provided online and so appropriate space for this facility is also to be provided within the library lastly some space should be made free for the restaurant cafe or canteen etc and the library shop so that the user could refresh them while sitting for a long hours in the library thus we have learned about the library building especially for special libraries but we are moving through the icity phase where some changes are seen in the traditions these changes are necessary for the development of society but we must not afraid of these changes rather be ready to face them it is seen that the libraries of modern times have traveled a lot from just single hall building of the earlier times to multi story well equipped buildings of the modern times vishnathan a long time ago once said change inherent to society a library plan must also be receptive of any ultimate change that may be required for varying and increasing demands made from it it is also right in present times so we must also be ready for the expected changes to adjust our libraries and their building for the future thank you